So she works hard on these. So I encourage you, take these and put them on your, put them on your refrigerator so that you remember what we have coming up at the church. Amen. So I want to go over a couple things and then we'll, we'll move on. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a church work day, September 19th at 10 a.m. here at the church. So we're going to come. We're going to clean. I'm getting, I'm getting this floor painted in the name of Jesus. Uh, even this week, I, I'm believing that God's going to do it. And we're going to be able to paint this floor and put some kind of sealant on it. See, that's the problem. We paint it four times. Four times, but the problem is the sealant is extremely expensive. That is what is extremely expensive. The sealant that would help it not to be so scratched up. You look down and you think they've never painted it, but we have. We really have four times. And um, so I'm going to try my best to get this painted. But we're going to do a church work day, September 19th. So I need everybody to come out and help us. We're going we're gonna to straighten up things. We're going to straighten up that back room. We're going to clean from top to bottom. We're going to get the, the, how many of you know that it's important to take care of God's property? Amen. It's important to show gratitude and thankfulness. So we're going to do that. So I ask you guys to come out. It's a church work day, September 19th. Amen. Um, we are working very hard. This says to provide a safe and wonderful children's ministry, which we are. We have a great children's ministry as you can look around today and you'll notice in about five minutes when the kids are dismissed uh, that we've got about 60 kids that are going to get up and leave okay so we have an excellent children's ministry God is doing something great in there but for your kids uh, please help by picking up your child immediately or promptly after service and if you want to come back down here and talk that's perfectly fine you're welcome we're not trying to kick you out but we just want you to get your kids and then if you want to come back and fellowship that's fine but please get your kids sign them out we don't want to just let kids run loose down the hall down the the block and you're wondering where your kids are and we don't know what happened to them so we want you to sign them out so please do that um also uh children ministry is having an open house um this sa uh, coming sunday next sunday at seven at september 27th oh you want to say something about that? no yeah go yes yes hello everybody good morning Praise and worship was so good. Um, I was just going to make, I have two announcements to make and um, and one that Pastor wanted me to make. But our children's ministry, we're having an open house. It's after service on September 27th. And, um, That's next Sunday. It is next no. Sunday? No. It's oh, not. Lord a Jesus. few. <laughs> Lord, I messed up. So it's in a couple <laughs> weeks. But Three after weeks. service, we're going to have displaying some of the things they've been working on. Their store, their, have you seen the little bucks they've been earning in class, so the things they're keeping? Their store is going to be open that day, and um, we're just really excited to have the parents see what the kids are learning and, and, and display it, so we want to invite you to that. And um, I just want to say, I came over here on Saturday, and uh, I, Jasmine was cleaning the carpet in the in the nursery and I know it took her a couple hours to clean and there were some people over here cleaning and I just want to say thank you for that yes, because the children's ministry looks so good and how many yeah. of you know the kids can tear and and dirty up something real fast yes. so it was much needed <laughs> um this Wednesday September the 9th we're going to have a special service and it's going to be called drenched and um it, you know, worship, sometimes worship just isn't long enough. Don't you wish sometimes you could just have a service of all worship? Just yeah. altar, come to the altar. And so that's what we're going to do this Wednesday. And it's for everybody's invited. Um, we're going to have just a worship service. You know, there's been many times that I can remember exactly some things that even I've been delivered and been healed from just by being at the altar. So we're going to have the chairs out of the way. We're going to have worship. If, if someone wants to bring a blanket to sit on, you know, to pray, whatever, whatever, however God moves, we're going to just, we're just going to be here and be free. And I know it's much needed. Somebody had brought this to my attention. I said, that's a great idea. And I think that that would be really great to do. So it's this Wednesday. It's this Wednesday at it's 7, 7 o'clock. We know it's, it's late notice, but but we feel it's important. To, this is something that God's put on our hearts to do. And, um, we're, you know, we're going to, we may do this, you know, once every few, few once every couple months or something like that during when we start our midweek service back, which an announcement's coming for that. I'll tell you on a second for that. But, um, but. We may do that once every few months or something like that, but I think it's important. We're just going to have a time of worship, a time just to p worship, just to get on the altar. If you want to bring your Bible, bring a bring a journal, bring something to write in, just bring something to to bring a yoga mat to to, to kneel on, or or if you just want to bring a blanket, or you want to just sit in a chair, whatever it is, we're just going to be free to let God move. Amen. So I want y'all to come. That we're going to be doing this this Wednesday night. I know it's late notice, but still, and you if you, you know y'all don't got nothing better to do, get here and come in and get, let God break free in your life. Amen. 
we find excuses for everything, but when we really want to do something, we'll do it. Amen? So if you really want to be here, you will be here. And those of us, I will be here, and I'm believing God's going to do something. I may, you know, I may prophesy. I may break out into prophecy and just prophesy to everybody here. I don't know what's going to happen, but I am going to just let God move in freedom. Amen? That's what we need, freedom. Amen? So we're going to do that this Wednesday at, at 7 o'clock. Also want to announce... Um, CDs are available, of course, for $3 at Sound Booth. You can watch our services at GCCLasVegas.com. You can give online at GCCLasVegas.com, or you can pay via PayPal, and the address is on there, GCCLasVegas, NV at gmail.com. You can do all of those things. Um, also, uh, Latasha, she's not here. She, her, one of her, her kids or someone in her family was having a, her, her niece, she said, was having an asthma attack, and they're waiting for her, the mom to come to take her to the hospital. I don't know if that's Sharonda. Sharonda is. I'm not sure who that is. But she said she came to the hospital. So, but we are starting up our dance and drama team. We're starting that up very soon. We, you know, the holidays are going to be here quicker than what you think, okay? And so we, got, we do very, a lot of very special things. So we want to do dramas and dances and things like that to, for worship. So Latasha's going to be heading that up. So if you're interested in that, please see her um, for information. Next Sunday, we are doing another Jersey Sunday, okay? Y'all hear me? We're doing another Jersey Sunday because next Sunday is the start of NFL season. However, y'all are going to be in church, so it does not matter. But we still want you to be able to come out and support your team. You know, we do it at, at, at the, on the Super Bowl Sunday and I thought why not do it do another casual Sunday and you can wear your Dolphins yucky jersey or your Cowboys yucky jersey or your Vikings yucky jersey or your Raiders yucky jersey or whatever it is and I'll wear my Broncos jersey and y'all can wear whatever y'all want okay but but uh <laughs> so hallelujah so we're gonna have a good time so you can wear your jersey next Sunday for the start of NFL season all right, Colin. Oh, look. Okay, go ahead, Colin. Show this. Now, November the 5th through the 7th, November 5th through the 7th, men, we're going to our men's retreat, okay? Well, we were going to try to go to an extra day, but we're not because some people couldn't get off work. So we're just going to go the regular days. We're going Thursday. We're leaving Thursday morning at like probably 8 or 9, 7 or 8, and we're going to go up there and we'll be back on Saturday. This is the place we are staying. Keep go, just keep going. These are all, this is a huge ranch house. Now, look at that. Now, that's a oh, stop. That's where I'm going to spend a lot of time in that hot tub right there. And then a lot of people will just be standing out here. This is all, and this is all on their back deck of this huge ranch house. Okay, go ahead. And this is one of the bedrooms, and we don't care about all that. Now, look at that beautiful view. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, gorgeous. Okay, keep going. And uh, this is the, now this is the game room barn. These are all, remember I talked about the pool tables, the foosball tables, the uh, ping pong tables. The, there's a movie thing. See the movie theater thing right there? I mean, there's dart boards. There's everything thing there that's where so so keep going okay so uh that's uh where all the bar the animals are if you want to go out there and pet some animals go right ahead i'm gonna stay away from you but but you go right ahead and pet the animals so these are some of the great pictures for where we're going november the 5th through the 7th okay so the price is 150 dollars is what it is it's going to cover everything from uh, every meal you ma every meal from breakfast lunch supper it's gonna it's gonna cover uh all the gas all the transportation it's gonna cover your your all the, the nights we stay there, it covers everything. The only thing you got to bring money for is Cracker Barrel. Amen. All you got to bring money for is Cracker Barrel. And then on the way back, we'll go to Chick-fil-A. So, uh, so, so on the way there, we're going to Cracker Barrel. On the way back, we'll go to Chick-fil-A. So that's all you got to bring money for. So it's going to be good. Now, men, I encourage you to get signed up. In fact, I need you to get signed up very quickly because I've got to make a deposit to this lady. So... If you want a bed, you want, now there's tons of places to sleep. There's, there, you have cots and, and bunk bed. But if you want your pick of the, the, the rooms, okay, the people who pay first are the ones who get to lay first, okay? You pay first and you get to lay first. So that means you pay, uh, you pay your money and you get to pick of the, the rooms you want. Now also, men, if you cannot go because you say, I just cannot afford it, that is not going to stop us. We're going to still get you there. Somebody will sponsor you. We will make sure you go. Just see me one-on-one. -on -one. But I believe by November 5th, which is how many months? October, November, three months. Surely, if you put away $20 a week, okay, or $10 a week here and there, just have something you can come up with something to be able to help to go amen all right so praise the lord i'm looking forward to that now finally last last announcement please stay after service literally and i'm not exaggerating when i say this i'm not going to do nothing i'm walking straight off of here to right there and if, if i if you 
were texted this week about leadership, if I text you this week about leadership, or if you have a desire to serve in leadership, I want you to understand what leadership is. Leadership is, is, is playing instruments. Leadership is singing in the choir. Leadership is ushering. Leadership is helping the children's department. Leadership is coming and helping to, to clean up the church. That Anything that has to do with getting involved in the church. We need people to get involved. We need people to help. We need people to, to want to do things. So I need to see you. If I text you something, uh, this week about a leadership meeting or if uh, if you have a desire you did not get a but you have a desire and you want to get involved stay with me over here literally literally for one minute I got to ask one question and then y'all can go okay and so so one question so after church please go over here I'll go straight there one minute and y'all can go but I have to ask y'all one question about that okay everybody say yes pastor yes. amen all right praise the Lord all right uh Colin can you play that song Colin can you play that song for me, Colin? Okay. Hey, will you get that um, the light back there? I want y'all, as we play this song, we're going to play it up on this TV screen. I want y'all to watch the words and really let it minister to you. Really let it, let it go, okay, to, to minister to you. Hold on, Colin. All the kids are dismissed. I forgot about that. All the kids are dismissed. Hold on, Colin. So a- as we watch 130 people get up, and leave, okay? So go ahead. Jesus, help us all. Lord, help us. One day we're going to have a big church because those kids are going to grow up. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, so I want, I want y'all to watch this. I want y'all to let this song minister to you, let it talk to you. This is what we're going to be talking about today. I want you to watch the words. The words, if you don't know this song, some of you probably know the song, but if you don't know the song, the words will be up here. And I, want you, I just want you to meditate on the words and think about what you're going through and what you're dealing with today and let this bless you today, all right? Okay, God bless you. I've been running through rain that I thought would never end Trying to make it on faith in a struggle against the wind I've seen the dark in the broken places But I know in my soul no matter how bad it gets I'll be alright
Amen. How many of you need some hope today? Amen. How many of you are believing for some hope today? Amen. I, you know, I, there's still hope for whatever you're going through. You turn them on. Whatever you're going through today, whatever you're dealing with, I, I, that song really ministers to me because no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, there is something better on the other side. Amen. There is still hope for you on the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray here. I didn't realize, we don't realize how many people you're missing today until all the kids get up and leave, okay? So <laughs> praise the Lord anyway, amen. All right, stretch your hands out forward towards me if you will. Father God, I come to you today, and I thank you, God, for each and every person that's here. I thank you, God, for this appointment that you brought us to, Father God, to be in your presence, to be in this word, Father God. I thank you today that lives are going to be changed in this place in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you are doing something miraculous in our church. You're doing something miraculous in our lives. God, I ask that, God, you, I will speak this out this way you have given it to me, not taking anything from nor add anything to but I speak it out the way you have given it to me God your word needs no embellishment your word need no help father God I just need to speak it out and lives will be changed God I ask you to anoint their ears to hear their eyes to see their minds to understand and most importantly and above all their hearts to receive what you're speaking in this place today that you be lifted up that you be glorified and you be exalted above all else father God God, that I will decrease and that you will increase, God, and that we will leave this place changed today with hope for our better future, with hope, with our work, walking towards our destiny to fulfill our purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen. amen. Turn with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Romans 15, Romans 15. Romans 15, and we're going to read 7 through 13. Romans 15, 7 through 13. When you're there, please stand for the reading and reverence of God's word today if you are able to. If you don't have your word, that, that's okay. We're going to read up here, but I do encourage you to bring it next time. Amen. Re please stand when you're there. Romans 15, 7 through 13. And it says this, Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to conform the promises made unto the Father. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again praise the Lord all ye Gentiles and laud him all ye people. And again Isaiah saith, saith there shall be a root of Jesse, and he, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope, and this is what this, I've said, read all that. To get to this one right here. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hold on, Colin. I want y'all to read that with me because I want y'all to really get that verse in your spirit today. Here we go. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost abound in hope abound in hope amen turn to your neighbor and say neighbor don't go messing with my hope don't mess with my hope you may be seated today amen I'm preaching a message today titled don't mess with my hope amen how many of you going to let me teach for, to you for about five minutes? And I'm going to preach to you for about three and a half hours and then we'll get out of here okay praise the lord amen i'm just joking i'm just joking maybe only two and a half the apostle will take pause here in his teaching and he takes a pause here where he's been teaching concerning relationships and he says okay hold on I gotta I gotta pause for a second I need to take a break real quick here and we he says from talking about relationships and he says in Romans 15 he talks about the weak versus the strong and he walks and he says he says we're talking about the weak versus the strong go ahead Romans 15 7 through 13 and he takes a break here, and he, he, he walks, the, and he talks about the weak versus the strong, and, and, and he talks about relationships and how, how to function in the fact that God's grace reaches outside of the Jewish race. His grace reaches outside of the Jewish. Remember, we talked about this a few weeks ago, about how, how finally that the grace was not just for the Jewish race, but the grace was extended to us also. You remember that? So, so this is what he's saying here. He takes a break from this. In other words, grace, God's grace will reach people you didn't even know it could reach. Amen? 
I said God's grace will reach a people you didn't even realize it could reach. It will touch a people you didn't even realize it could touch. Amen. The Jewish race had in them a pattern that they had protected. They had a pattern that they had protected and they thought they were exclusive and they thought they they were the only ones and they thought it was just about them but you got to understand that it was not. It was not just about them. It was about for all of us. Amen. It was for all of us. Amen. Grace is not just for one certain people. Grace is for every one of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Jewish race had a pattern, though, of protecting this. And then Paul tells them to get ready for the Gentiles to be included in this grace. He says, get ready because y'all are no longer the exclusivity of grace. I'm going to include Jesus. Says, I got it. Jesus has come. And now we all are extended grace. Amen. And so in Romans 15, verse 13, where we read Paul passed, makes this pauses and he makes this a prayer and he says okay I'm going to pray for a second it's like he just stops right in the middle of his teaching about relationships and says now let me pray something to you and he gives us a few sentences about praying and that's what we read in 13 about hope abounding amen and this is what it says according to the amplified bible this is what it says may the god of your hope so fill you all with joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith That by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound and be overflowing with hope. Amen. How many of you need to be overflowing with hope today? How many of you are facing some circumstances today? Y'all know I'm going to preach, so give me a second. Y'all looking at me like, oh, where's he going with this? I'm going to preach you happy in a second, okay? But but how many of you in here need need hope in your life? Maybe you're facing a situation with your finances. Maybe you're facing a situation with your family. Maybe you're facing a situation with with whatever you're working in, in, in your job, whatever it is. How many of us need hope? You need healing in your body, healing in your child's body, whatever it is. I want to say today that there is hope for you ahead. Amen. God is bringing hope for you. Amen. And so when I read this scripture this past week, I felt led to say these words. And I wrote this down. I want to say this. There is in here right now, today, many expectations of God. Some of you have had prayers. You've had petitions. You've had prophetic words that have brought you into the realm of hope. Hope should be no strange thing to us, okay? Hope should be no strange thing to us. We are the people of God, amen? And we should have hope. Between what God can do and what God is, amen? I said between what God can do and who God is. There should be hope inside of us. Hope is so powerful that in the book of Zechariah, the prophet says, we are prisoners of hope. Can we turn that light off, please? Somebody please get that light off for me. That is blinding me. Um, the, the, we, are, we are prisoners. The Bible says that Zechariah said, the prophet says, we are prisoners of hope. And then Hosea will say, there is a door of hope, okay? So hope is something that is very important. See, if we really knew what everyone in this place today was hoping for, it would may overwhelm us. Do you hear me today? If you really knew what I was believing for, what I was hoping for, what I was declaring in my life, what I'm believing that God's going to do, I'm believing we're getting new chairs in this place. I'm believing this floor is getting painted and getting looking right. I'm believing some of this this work is going to look good. I am believing. If you even knew, I'm believing once we get that, we're going to oh explode so much that we're going to be moved out of this building into a new building I am telling you if you knew what all I was hoping for in my life it may overwhelm you a little bit good to see you Des amen Uh, I said it may overwhelm you a little bit if you knew what I was hoping for and what I was believing for and maybe if I knew what you were hoping for and what you were believing for it may overwhelm me if we really knew what the person next to us had been praying about what he had been he or she had been believing for what he or she had been expecting it may overwhelm us a little bit because I want you to understand we talk about faith a lot we always talk about faith how many of you know we hear messages about faith right Shay Tommy Michelle we hear messages Duana about faith we hear messages Rita about love we hear messages about this and about that all of the time we hear these messages on this but rarely do we hear messages on hope because we keep our desires kind of quiet oftentimes 
we keep what we're believing for oftentimes kind of quiet because we really don't want to express those things to people too quickly because they may look at us funny or they may think we're crazy or they may think we're fanatical or they may think we've lost our minds. I, I really hope this happens in my life. I really hope this takes place in my life or I really expect this to occur in my life or I really expect this thing that will happen. We would rather say things like that <clears throat> Because it gives us a way out. It gives us a, uh, something to fall back on. Well, that's what I was believing for. Uh, that's what I was kind of thinking might happen. But when you put hope into it, all of a sudden, people really start listening to you. I, I, I'm believing. I hope. I'm no longer is just an expectation, but I know God is going to do this in my life. See, we all have to get to the point where we believe what God said he would do, he will do. If God said he will heal you, he will heal you. If God said he will bless you, he will bless you. If God said he would save your family, he will save your family and so we got to get to the point where we're like that and I came here today to tell somebody don't let nobody start messing with your hope do you hear me don't let nobody start messing with your expectations and your desires and what God has told you and the prophetic words that's been spoken on your life don't let nobody mess with your hope you got to have hope there is hope in front of me that God is going to do something great there is hope in front of me that better days are ahead for Grace Christian Center there are hope in front of me that my finances are going to line up according to the word of God do you hear me today so today <coughs> I want to talk to you about three things three things number one hope attacked number two hope adjusted and number three hope abounded hope attacked hope adjusted and hope abounded I've never seen in my life hope assaulted so much Hope attacks so much. The way I've seen it over the last five to ten years, what do I mean by that? It's almost as if hope is, gonna, it, it, it is no longer among people. Nobody has hope anymore. Nobody has hope that things are going to turn around. Nobody has hope that, that they have a better future ahead of them. Nobody has hope that, 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 that what God said he would do, he's going to do. Nobody has hope anymore. People have lost attack, have, have lost hope, and there's an all-out attack of hope. And the opposite of hope is hopelessness. Let me say that again. The opposite of hope is hopelessness. And there are so many hopeless people that have no hope and they have no hope for tomorrow they have no hope that God's going to do what he said he'd do and as I've been praying this week God has showed me that the manifestation of hopelessness is depression let me say that again as I've been I'm about to preach okay y'all smile at me give me a smile okay give me a big smile okay I need y'all smiling at me I, I as I've been praying this week God began to show me that the attack of, uh, on hope and, and this attack that's taken place has shown me the manifestation of hopelessness is depression. Mm. Depression at its basic stage is a pressing down. At no other time have I seen more populated atmosphere of depression. Do y'all hear me? Am I the only one around that knows that somebody that's depressed, that has seen depression attack somebody in your family, depression that comes upon you, depression that takes place even in the church body? There are so much, many leaders that are depressed, pastors that are depressed, people that are depressed, that are sitting in the pulpit, I mean sitting in the pews every single week. And I've never seen such a, a, a place that we're at where depression is so rampant in life. It's as if every day you're going to meet one or two people at the the minimum who are suffering from some kind of depression every day you're going to run into somebody it's almost like it seems you're going to run into somebody that is suffering from a cause of depression the feeling of hopelessness would be the definition of depression the feeling of hopelessness would be the definition of depression but the product of depression includes such things as anxiety panic disorders okay those type of things are the product of depression anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States did y'all know that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States it affects over 40 million adults 18 or over I said it att attacks and affects over 40 million adults. 20% of our population is suffering from severe depression. 20% 
of our population is suffering from severe depression. And if you ask them why they're, really, they're depressed, they really can't tell you. All they'll say is they're depressed. They don't know why. They're just depressed. Because the, it's because this, hear me. Depression is more than an attitude. It's an atmosphere. I'm going to say it again. Depression is more than an attitude. Depression is an atmosphere. What do you mean by that, Pastor Ron? In other words, if you get enough people depressed, it starts affecting the environment. If you get enough people around you that are depressed, you suddenly are going to get depressed. If you're around a, a bunch of Debbie Downers and, 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 and mean, upset people, and they're discouraged and they're depressed, eventually that thing is going to get on to you. Because in, if, 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 if depression is affecting your environment, it's, not, it's more than an attitude. It is a what? It's an atmosphere. It starts affecting the atmosphere. If you walk into a place where the majority of people are depressed, you start feeling sad yourself. If you walk into a place where the majority of people are upset, you start feeling upset yourself. And they said nothing to you. They've done nothing to you, but you can feel that depression spirit, that thing, that gloom and doom hanging over you, and it begins to attack you. Maybe none of you know what I'm talking about, but I know you do. We can play silly in here if we want, but you know exactly what I'm talking about because they have filled the atmosphere so full of depression that when you walk in you suddenly feel that spirit come on you and you don't even know where it came from you weren't upset when you went to work you weren't depressed when you went to work but all of a sudden you get around so and so and they start getting negative and they start getting mad and they start getting upset by the time you know it you're upset you're discouraged you're mad and you don't even you don't even know why you ate McDonald's egg McMuffin. You had a coffee, a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. You're doing real good. And you walk in there looking good. You lost weight like me. And you're looking good, feeling good about it. And then somebody else comes in and they're depressed. So now you're depressed. And now it gets on you. Do you hear me? And I want you to hear to Please do not miss what I'm saying. A little more teaching than I'm preaching. This is sad what I'm about to say, Taisha. Researchers have discovered that the fastest growing market for antidepressants is what? Anybody can guess. I'm open forum right now. Researchers have discovered what the, what the fastest growing market for antidepressants are. Who, what, what would y'all think? Any guess? I, you're not, you're not going to get in trouble if you're wrong, okay? Because I would have been wrong on this. What do you say? What, like what, 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 what type of people? Like the elderly? What type of people would you think? Preschoolers, preschoolers, preschoolers are the number one fastest growing, is that not sad, growing market for antidepressants. Let me say it again. Researchers have discovered that preschoolers are the fastest growing market for antidepressants. We are giving preschoolers medication to keep them from being depressed. Do y'all hear me? Kids ought to be the happiest people in the world. They ought to walk around with no problems in the world, like nothing's affecting them, that nothing is bothering them. But I'm here to tell you that is the, not the world we are living in. Have you looked around lately to see how many people have bags under their eyes? Have you looked around to look at people? Now we got kids looking tired, worn out from carrying life. We have little children walking around looking like old people looking sad, looking discouraged, looking depressed. And I tell you what, as I studied this, I found out that this week that 30% of women are clinically depressed. 30% of women are clinically depressed. What does that mean? Not just depressed, but depressed to the point they could be admitted into a mental hospital. I'm teaching y'all right now, okay? So I'm trying to give y'all some wisdom. 30% of women in the United States are are clinically depressed. I'm not talking about you had a bad day at work, okay, and, and you know, uh, I'm going to lay in my bed and cover up. I'm talking about you are so depressed that you could be admitted into a mental hospital. 20% of men are clinically depressed to the point where they could be admitted into the, win and into the mental hospital. By the year 2020, it will be the number one killer of people in America, is what doctors are saying. Did y'all hear what I just said? By the year 2020, depression will be the number one killer of people in America. It will overtake heart failure by the year 2020. I'm not making this stuff up. You can go research it for yourself. This is what doctors are saying today. Studies show that depression is the cause 
cause for coronary disease. Your mind is powerful. That's why Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you are not renewing your mind, you have a chance to get into that kind of depression. You got to wake up every day, no matter how yesterday was, and you got to say, today's going to be a good day. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to thank Him, no matter what's going on in my life. Hallelujah. See, let me say this. It's time for us to repent. And repent doesn't mean to cry. We think of repenting as getting at the altar and crying, and that's good. We can do that. But repent means to change the way you think. Oh, let me say that again. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Repent does not mean come into the altar, and that's good and great, and we want to do that. But it's not just about the tears flowing down your mind. Repent means I'm changing the way I think. I'm I'm renewing my mind. Too many of us are convinced of the bad and not not hoping and not not have no hope. We've already decided my life's going to be bad. We've already decided I'm never going to get married again. We've already decided I'm never going to see this. We've already decided this and that. But I'm here to tell you, you cannot get discouraged. You cannot get depressed. There is hope in front of you. Don't start messing with my hope because the better days are ahead for me. God is about to move for me. God is about to do for me. Come on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what hopelessness is. It's not only depression, Carla. Hopelessness. Everybody listen to this. Hopelessness. Because this is not being preached enough. And there's so many hopeless Christians. Christians that go to church every Sunday and they have no hope. They have no hope. This needs to be preached. Hopelessness is not only depression, Pastor Rossi. Hopelessness is anticipated defeat. Let me say that again. Hopelessness is not just depression. Hopelessness is also, Maria, anticipated defeat. We don't expect to win anymore. We don't expect to be successful anymore. We don't expect to overcome. We, get, we, we, we have an addiction or something. We don't expect to overcome anymore. We just expect, well, it's just what my, my mama was an alcoholic. My daddy was an alcoholic. So I guess I'll be an alcoholic. No, that's the, I bind that up in the name of Jesus. My, 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 my daddy was a womanizer. My, my granddaddy was a woman. So I'll always be a womanizer. My, 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 my mom cheated on my dad. My grandma cheated on my grandpa. So I always cheat. No, I bind that up in the name of Jesus. You are not. There is hope for you in the name of Jesus. Do you hear me today? We no longer expect to win. We no longer expect Rita to overcome. In fact, we're mad at winners. We get mad at people who get ahead. We're mad at them. If people are doing well, we talk about them. If people are doing being successful, oh, they're only successful because their granddad or their father did this. No, you're jealous. In the name of Jesus, you need to be quiet. You're jealous of what they got. You're jealous of how they got it. And I'm here to tell you today, we need to stop being so angry at people and start saying, you know what, I'm so happy for you, and I'm believing if he did it for you, he can do it for me too. Hallelujah. And the reason people get mad isn't because they are doing so good, but because they are doing so dadgum bad. Do y'all hear me? The reason people get mad is not because the other people are doing so good, it's because you're doing so bad. And you're mad at them because they're doing good. Oh, man. The antonym of hopelessness It's hopefulness. So we need to stop acting like we don't have to deal with it. Because the reality is that we have to deal with this. Amen. I have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. We all got to deal with it. Because if we don't deal with it, we're going to go into a place of never hoping for anything. We're going to think the best days are behind us. We're going to think this is all that's ever been meant for my life. We're going to think that we deserve to be treated bad. We're going to think that we deserve, we deserve everything we get. We're going to think we're not smart enough to do something but I'm telling you when you get a hope inside of you that says you know what there is hope for a better tomorrow I hope I I know that God can bless me I know that God can use me if he did it for them he will do it for you hallelujah today in the Bible Elijah said go ahead and kill me pastor Rossi he said go ahead and kill me because I'm no better than anyone else in this land This is one of the most incredible prophets of the entire Old Testament. And he was praying, God, take me out because I'm depressed. 
God, uh, uh, in my life because I'm so discouraged. I'm depressed. David prayed in Psalm 42, verse 5, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Now, this psalm, I want you to understand, was written that David says this when he said, why are you cast down on my soul, was written when, when, when David returned from Ziklag. How many remember Ziklag? Anybody in here remember Ziklag when I preached on Ziklag? And so, so, so David, David has returned from Ziklag, and he writes this about why are you cast down on my soul, and he finds that his wife and his kids and everyone has been taken away, Des, and everybody is gone, Priscilla, and, and Dondi, there's nobody left. The family is gone. His enemies have destroyed everything. Ziklag, listen, I found, I didn't know this i wish i had known this when i preached this pastor but i didn't ziklag means to be enveloped and wrapped in depression and grief that's what ziklag means to be enveloped and wrapped in depression and grief so when he returned to the city that was supposed to be a blessing to him he found out that all the women and all the children are missing and no one's there all the animals have been taken and they've been kidnapped and David begins to cry out and he begins to say Lord shall I pursue my enemies so that I can recover everything they've taken from me and while in the midst of this and while in the midst of this battle he talks to himself and he says why are you so cast down my soul in other words, why am I so depressed? Why am I so discouraged? Why am I letting this thing overtake me? And he says, hope, and he says, and he says this, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his continence. So he's saying, I'm still going to hope in my God and believe that something good is going to come out of this. Even in your worst situation, Wade, even in your worst situation, Aja, even in your worst situation, Carolyn, there is hope for God to move. There is hope that God can turn it around. There is hope that God can make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and watch what David is saying here. He says, he says, when he says, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, he's saying, I ain't even asking him for his hand, but I just need him to look at my situation. I'm not even asking him for his hand. I'm not asking him for his face. But I just need him to know what I am facing today. And when I realize that God is looking at what I lost, then I can begin to hope again. Because I know he cares about what has been stolen from you and from me. God cares about what you're going through. God cares about what you're facing today. God cares about every circumstance that has your name written on it today. Amen. And I want you to understand that God's going to move for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm here to tell you today. And I want you to know that God's going to move for you. And then when you will get an attitude of hope, you can begin to hear God like you've never heard him before. Some of you aren't hearing for God because you've got no hope. Some of you are wondering, where's God? Where's God? Where's God? Why am I not hearing anything? Why is God not moving? Because you've lost all hope that God can turn your situation around. You've lost all hope that God can save your family members. You've lost all hope that God can heal you or your children. You've lost all hope that your finances can turn around. You've lost all hope that you can get back in school. All you need is just a little hope, and it can turn your life around. Do you hear me today? And I'm here to preach you to a hopeful state today. By the time we leave here today, you are going to have hope hope again. You are going to say, my dreams are still alive. I'm not too old. I'm not too this. I'm not too that. It's not too late. I'm not too small. I'm not too big. I can have hope for a better tomorrow. I can have hope that I can get this done. I can have hope that I can accomplish this. Hallelujah. But you have to get an attitude of hope and then you can begin to hear like you've never heard from him before. But first you have to be real with yourself. When you're depressed, you have to look at yourself and say, why am I depressed? I'm depressed because I lost this. I'm depressed because this relationship didn't work out. I'm depressed because this thing isn't playing out the way I thought it would. Hope thou in God, David said. Then you have to go back to yourself after you can acknowledge that I'm depressed and this is why I'm depressed. You then have to go back to yourself, talk to yourself again and say, okay, it's all right that I'm discouraged. It's all right that I'm depressed. But it's not all right for me to stay depressed. It's not all right for me to stay in this sadness. It's not all right for me to stay in this sorrowful state. It's not all right for this and that. I will tell you now, hope 
thou in God. Begin to hope in God again. Begin to hope that God can turn your situation around. Begin to hope that there is better for you. I didn't come here to tell you to hope in God. I came here to tell, to tell you to tell yourself to hope in God. Do you hear me today? I didn't come here today. Let me say that again. To tell you to hope in God. I came here today to t- for you to begin to tell yourself to begin to hope in God again. Because I can't hope for you, baby. I can't get your hope. I can't hope for you. You got to hope for yourself. You got to begin to say, I believe. I hope. I know God can do this. I can't do it. That's something you got to do for yourself. And today, some of you got to start to hope again. Some of you got to start to dream again. Some of you got to start to believe again. Some of you got to stand up right where you're at and say, there is better days ahead of me. My finances will all not always be jacked up like this. My situation will not always be messed up like this. God will move for me. So can I preach this thing like I really want to preach this thing today? Okay. Hope has been attacked. Do you hear me today? Hope has been attacked. Everywhere you go, Elder Harlan, there is depression. Everyone is down. April, everyone is discouraged. We got Xanax. We got Prozac. We got Zoloft. We have everything you can imagine. Just whatever you need, we got a pill for you. Just take this pill, and we're going to get you feeling better. Oh, my Jesus. We have prescription for this, and we got a prescription for that. If Xanax don't work, try some Prozac. Prozac don't work, try some, try some Zoloft. Zoloft don't work then let's try some Ambien and put yourself to sleep then wake up and take another Zoloft if that don't work put another Prozac in your mouth if that don't work try some more Xanax if that don't work try some more Zoloft but we're going to keep you drugged up until you feel better about your situation but I'm here to tell you there is hope and it's not an appeal but it's in God do you hear me today your hope is not in a little pill your hope is not in this your hope is in God I'm preaching better than y'all amen amen Pastor Ryan I'll amen myself amen hallelujah See, David said sometimes you got to encourage yourself, right? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's biblical me doing that, y'all. It's biblical. Amen. <laughs> But it's true. People with Priscilla, Dondi, they want to keep us drugged up. They want to keep us uh, chained on all this mess and all this junk so that we, we'll, we'll just forget all our problems. But guess what? Once you get off of that, your problems are still there. You probably didn't do nothing for your problem because the only thing that can do something for your problem is right here. This is the only thing that can do something for your problem. Man can't do something for your problem. Drugs can't do something for your problems. You can get drunk and wasted. It's not going to do something for your problem. Make make you make you crazy for a little bit. You may do some stupid stuff you wouldn't you wish you wouldn't have done. But you're going to wake up from that. And the problems are still going to be right in front of you. The only thing that's going to make a difference in your life is begin to hope thou in God again. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13, 12 says this. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. The word deferred means to be drawn out or it means to be prolonged or it means to be delayed. So when hope is deferred, it's an expectation that is what? On delay. When hope is deferred, it's an expectation that is prolonged. It's an expectation that is on delay. So when hope is deferred, it's on delay. An expectation that is now being prolonged. In other words, it, can't, it, 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 it didn't happen when you thought it was going to happen. In other words, it didn't happen how you thought it was going to happen. Now watch this. It didn't happen with who you thought it was going to happen with. Oh, some of y'all ought to amen, say praise the Lord, I got you. I know what you're talking about there, Pastor. You're right on. So I'm going to say it again. Hope deferred means delayed it means prolonged in other words it didn't happen when you thought it was going to happen it didn't happen how you thought it was going to happen and it didn't happen with who you thought it was going to happen with so listen to this your highest expectation has the power to produce your greatest disappointment oh man one person got that i'm a <laughs> your highest expectation Everybody say, say, your highest expectation has the power to produce my greatest disappointment. So you have to be careful with who, what, and how you set your expectations. Do you hear me? You have to be careful with who, what, and how you're setting your expectation. Because people are crazy. 
And people are going to let you down. And people are going dis- to disappoint you. And people are going to hurt you. And if you put your expectation in people, you're going to be upset almost every single time. But if you put your expectation in a situation, the situation is going to crash almost every time. But if you put your situation in God and put your expectation in God and put your hope in God, you're never going to be disappointed. You'll never fall short. You hear me today? You will always have hope in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. If your expectation is on a timetable, Mary, Miss Mason, if your expectation is on a timetable, Maricel, if our expectation is on a timetable and it doesn't happen when we think it's going to happen, y'all, I hope y'all are getting what I'm saying today. If, you, if your expectation is on a timetable, tell you you shouldn't wait, if, and it doesn't happen when you think it's going to happen. I thought this was going to happen by now. I thought I'm going to church. I'm paying my tithe. I'm doing all this. I'm giving God everything. I'm doing everything I know to do. And then all of a sudden it's on. But, but I've been doing, I've been going to church for three weeks straight now. But nothing's happened. When you put your expectation on a timetable like that and things don't happen how we thought they were going to happen, we have a tendency to get very depressed and discouraged. Let me tell you, that's why 99% of people you'll see and come to church and they come and they get saved and they get right, but they don't come back. Because they expected, I gave my heart to God, I went up front, I prayed, I said that prayer, that pastor said I'm saved in the name of Jesus, and nobody called me this week with a new job. And nobody called me to offer me a hundred dollars and nobody called me and this didn't happen and even I had problems on my job or I had this so they get discouraged and they get depressed because our expectations are now on a timetable that we're expecting okay God I did this for you now you'll do this for me that's never going to work okay that's never going to work that's never going to work for you okay when you say I'll do this for you God if you do this for me no see God already did enough for you amen God already did enough for me anything he does now is just is just cake on uh, icing on the cake amen cake on the cake whatever you want to say amen (laughs) hallelujah do you hear me today expectations require patience and that's a hard thing for us Daryl amen oh Elder Hall and Aussie Pastor Kathy I tell you that's a hard thing for us Patience, I, pr- I, whew, I need patience. Lord, I need patience. Expectations require patience. When the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick, deferred in the Greek means prolonged to the point of being removed. Deferred in the Greek means prolonged to the point of being removed. In other words, you've waited so long that now you don't even think it's ever going to happen. Oh, I'll, let me make it real for you. You've waited so long for the man of God. Now you don't even think it's going to happen for you. You waited so long for the woman of God. Now you just don't even think it's ever going to happen for you. You waited so long for a promotion on your job. Now you don't even think it's going to happen. You've waited so long to get a phone call about this or about that situation. Now all of a sudden, you don't even have the faith to believe that it's going to happen anymore because it's been hope deferred. It's been too prolonged. So, so I, I had to ask myself this. I had to ask myself this, Rita. I had to ask myself this this week. I said, why is there a difference I mean, why, why, let me say that again. I, I began to ask myself this week this one question because I wanted to understand what deference really is and why is there deference and why we have this deference. And the Lord told me two things why we have deference. So what is deference? Prolonged or delayed, right? Why? And I said, God, why is there de- this deference, Mary? Why, why do we have this, God? Why are we having to deal with this? You know, because we want it now, right? I want it now. I want this now. I want this to happen now. I'm ready now. And God began to show me this, and this is what he said. He said, it's, it, it's either something he's doing or something we are doing. <laughs> but it's one of us who is doing it. It's either something he's doing that is deferred and prolonged or something that we are doing. And we, we, we gotta, we're real good to point the finger at everybody else and to blame everybody else on why it's, it's them that reason there's not happening. It's them, the re- they're the reason that's not, that's the re- this is the, re- but the Bible, we're beginning to show me this reason. There's two reasons things aren't happening. There's two reasons things are deferred in your life. There's two reasons you're not seeing these things that you're hoping for and you're, you were praying for and believing for. It's either him or me. Do you hear me? It's either one of us. Many times your deference is a result of your preference. Let me say that again, okay? Many times your deference is because of your preference. Y'all know what a preference is, right? 
I prefer this person. I prefer that person. I prefer this. Many times your deference is a result of your preference. What you preferred had to be deferred because it wasn't meant for your destiny. Oh, let me say that again. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Many times (laughs) what you preferred had to be what? Deferred. Because it was never meant for you. It was never meant for your destiny. And you're sitting here going, why did this have to happen? Because God had to do it because you were never going to do it. Because he looked too good in his jeans. Or he looked too good in his shirt. Or she was too pretty in this. And, uh, but God sometimes has to say, no, 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 no. I got to put that on hold because that wasn't meant for your destiny. So God will wait you out until your hope for that thing, that relationship, or whatever leaves. Because it wasn't meant for you to begin with. Oh, man, God, Jesus. God will wait you out because it was never meant for you anyway. So he'll wait till those feelings pass. He'll wait till that moment's pass. And that's why sometimes it's being deferred because he's waiting for you to get over this one because that one was never meant for your destiny. That thing was never meant for your destiny. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank both of you. Lord Jesus, bless both of them for the claps. Amen. And then the other thing I, I want to tell you this is other times we delay ex- our expectation because of our bad choices other times we delay our expectations because of I or our not their our bad choices I read this in the message Bible unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick but a sudden good break can turn your life around oh, let me say it again unrelenting disappointment Leaves your heart sick. But a sudden good break can turn your life around. A sudden good break. How many of you know what a sudden good break? Uh, You know what? We need to get our mind off this big old thing and start looking at one good sudden break in our life. Do you hear me today? Tell your neighbor, say, all I need is one break. All I need is one break. See, that's all you need is one break in your life. We got our mind focused on this huge, big thing, and God's saying, no, all you need is one good break in your life. If I can just break one thing in your life, it will open up the floodgates of heaven to bring down blessings you don't have room enough to contain. See, I'm not even looking for that anymore. If I can just get a break, then my hope will come back. If I can just get a break, then my hope will come back. Then I can look for that big thing again. All I need is just a break. Do you hear me today? Hallelujah. How many of you know what I'm talking about today? How many of you understand where I'm coming from? All I need is just one break. All I need is one opportunity. All I need is to get my foot in the door. All I need is one chance. All I need is this. All I need is that. God's going to do it for you. How many of you believe it? All we need is a sign. One little break can turn it all around. One little opportunity can change your life. One little open door can do something great. So I'm going to go ahead and prophesy to you today, Micah 2.13, where the Bible says the breaker has come up and is breaking among you. Jesus is the breaker. Many of you need to understand that. Jesus is the breaker that shows up and says, I'm going to give you a breakthrough that you need to cause you to turn all the way around. Not halfway around. Turn your life all the way around. I'm going to give you the break that will cause you to hope again. That will cause you to believe again. That will cause you to give God the glory again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today in this place, today in this place, I decree and I declare and I prophesy. Y'all better, whoever wants to receive this, better get ready to receive what I'm about to say. I decree, I declare, and I prophesy in this place right now that this week you will see at least one sign. That this week you will hear at least one word. You will receive one handshake. You will get one open door. You will see one little window that will say that's all I needed for me to hope again. That's all I needed for me to believe again. That's all I needed was the opportunity to go forward. Do you hear me today? I prophesy to you today that you will begin to hope again in that big thing because this week everybody say this week this week if you receive this there's going to come a handshake there's going to become an open door there's going to become a little window there's going to come a divine opportunity there is going to come a word there is going to become a situation and i'm declaring i'm prophesying into your life and it's going to allow you to begin to hope again for that big thing hallelujah hallelujah if there's anyone in here that is ready for that break then i need you right now to give god praise like you believe it give god 
God praise like you receive it. Give God praise like you're standing on that. Give God praise like you receive that. Hallelujah. Mm. Hold on, I got to praise him. Hallelujah. God, I thank you that my break is coming. I thank you that my this place is overflowing. God, I thank you that doors are opening for my ministry. God, I thank you for a new building that's coming. God, I thank you that we're getting new chairs. God, I thank you that the floor is getting right. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. My break is coming. My break is coming. Tell your neighbor, my break is coming. My break is coming. Hallelujah. Colin, if you could put Romans 8, 13 back up there for a second. Nothing will adjust your hope faster than one break, Des. Do y'all hear me today? Nothing, Dewana, will adjust your hope faster than one break. Nothing will adjust your hope faster than one break. Amen. Do you hear me today? I don't only prophesy a break, but I declare a breakthrough I declare a breaking out. Do you hear me in your life? I declare it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 13, I want to read this again. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, that you may abound in hope. Everybody say abound. Listen, I want to tell you something. I want you to hear me. Before you abound, some of y'all abound, Y'all need to rebound, okay? Before some of you ever abound, y'all need to begin to rebound. Before you start thinking about abounding, and for you to rebound, you have to what? You have to block out, right? Anybody play basketball in here besides me? Okay, okay. Come in, Tay, come here. Come here. Cody, get the basketball and the goal and bring it up. Bring my goal out, my ball out, okay? I'm just kidding. (laughs) If you play basketball, okay, you know, and I did, I was excellent basketball player excellent <laughs> I was a shooter y'all laugh <laughs> Cody could I shoot uh, yeah, uh, I, I can shoot I'm not saying I can shoot now okay I don't know but I, I probably can't even do it but back in the day <laughs> no but listen don't laugh so much people <laughs> to block out if, if you're playing basketball and there's a rebound coming. The b- ball's been shot off the backboard. The, your coach is going to tell you to box out. That means you're like this. You're, you're boxing this guy out so he can't get over you. And see, if he tries to go over me like this, when I'm like this, it's a foul on him, right? So you, that's how you box out. You block it out. And for some of us, y'all aren't blocking out enough in your life. And before you can ever abound, you're going to have to begin to rebound, which means you need to block out all the gossip. You need to block out all the naysayers. You need to block out all the negative. Negativity. You need to block out all the bad thoughts. You need to block out all the haters. You need to block, b- block out all the backbiters. You need to block out all the snakes in the grass. You need to block out some people's numbers that keep texting you and calling you. You need to begin to block out so that you can begin to abound and rebound into the things of God. Do you hear me? Block out, rebound, then you can abound. Hallelujah. The word abound, the word abound really only functions at its highest level when you connect it with one or two words. Either abound in or abound with. Abound in or abound with. Ten minutes and I should be done, but maybe 15. Abound in or abound with. That's what it means. At the highest level, that's where you can use uh, uh, abounding in. Abound in. Or abound with. So you will say, I abound in provision. Or, or I, abound, uh, I abound with provision. Or you would say, I abound in a good work. Which means other people are doing this work. But when I do this work, I excel in the same thing that other people are doing because you are bounding in what you are doing. Some of you need to quit being settled on just being status quo, on just being like everybody else, on just barely getting by, on having to rob Peter to pay Paul, but your bills are still paid. Some of you need to quit being settled on just being average. We aren't abounding when we are producing on everyone else's level. 
I'm going to say that again. We are abounding when we are producing. If you are in a company, you ought to be number one in that company. Or you ought to be striving to be number one in that company. If you are on the job, you ought to try to strive to be number one in that job. If you are doing, I'm striving to be number the best preacher in the world. Do you hear me? I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm about number seven or eight right now, but I'm moving on up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking, people. But seriously, when whatever we do, we ought to be trying to excel at it. I don't want to be like everybody else, Wade. I don't need, I need to be better than everybody else because I got the joy of the Lord inside of me. I ought to be better at my job than everybody else. I ought to be the best teacher around. I ought to be the best nurse around. I ought to be the best kidney person around. Do you hear me? Whatever it is, I ought to be the best cook at, at Olive Garden. I'm going there today, Cody. Cut me up something good. But, but praise the Lord. I ought to be the best at whatever I do. I ought to be striving to be the best. In other words, when you're anointed, you can do what everyone else is doing because you have God on your side. Then you do it better than everyone else is doing it. Do you hear me? You're going to do it better than everyone else. Then people start asking, how are you doing this? And you have the open door to say, because God is on my side. Do you hear me? God is with me. God's got me. God's taking care of me. Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because the only reason you abound is for the glory of God. That's the only reason you are abounding, you're excelling anything, is for the glory of God. And today I speak an excel into your spirit. I speak an excel into your spirit right now. You aren't going to do like everyone else. You're not going to be like everyone else. But you're going to be better, beyond, above, and abounding more than everyone else. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, you abound with or you abound in? And so Paul noted this and said, so that you may abound in hope. So you may, be, may abound not with hope, but you abound what? In hope. Not with hope. Not with hope. I abound in hope. What do you mean? When I saw this while preparing to preach this today, this is what I heard. Stop trying to get hope in you. You get in hope. Stop trying to go after hope. You stop trying to get hope to come to you. Oh, hope, I hope, I'm hoping I can get some hope. No, you got to run towards hope. You got to say, hope, I need you. Hope, I got to come for you. You got to abound in hope. You got to go after hope. Hope exists. Hope exists. Hope exists. Hope lives. Hope is a feeling to it. Hope has a personality to it. You can see it exhibited in other people. In other words, what do you mean by that? The, the person next to you, when they walked in today, you took note of them. And you noticed several things about them. In fact, some of you have been known to change seats before because the person you were sitting next to looked so depressed and so discouraged that you didn't want that stuff getting off on you. You've been known to do that. Don't lie. Some of you have. I'm not gonna, I can't see that. I don't, don't want to get that depression on me. I, I, need to, I need to be sitting next to a praiser. I need to get next to somebody that's going to come Wednesday night to our drench service that will praise God, that will lift their hands, that will worship with me because I'm going through something and I need somebody to, to connect with me. Do you hear me today? Listen, it ain't hard to notice a depressed person. And it ain't hard to notice a person of hope. Because when a person of hope walks into the room, then suddenly the atmosphere begins to adjust itself. Oh, let me say that again. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I, preach, I feel like I'm preaching better than what y'all are with me today. Jesus, I'm missing some people. I'm going to have to get them back and call them all and say, don't miss another service. I'm going to say that again. Hope, uh, you got to hear what I'm saying. I'm about to close, but I want you to hear this last five minutes of my sermon. It's very important. When a person of hope walks in the room, suddenly the atmosphere begins to adjust itself because hope has entered to the room. Hear this. Write this down. Just give me credit for it, please. You are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. You set the temperature for the whole place. I'm going to say that again. You are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. You set the temperature for the whole place. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. I am not a thermometer. I am a thermostat. I set the temperature for this whole place. So we are on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am, you are not a thermostat. 
You are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. We set the temperature for the whole place. If this church ain't praising, then it's your fault. Do you hear? Oh, y'all get what I'm about to say. Give me five minutes. Y'all can go home and talk about me after church. But give me five minutes. If this church ain't a praising church, then it's your fault. It's not Carla's fault. It's not Shay's fault. It's not Tony's fault. It's not the drummer's fault. It's not Colin's fault. It's your fault. It's not the choir's fault. It's your fault. If you're I'm not at the altar worshiping God, lifting your hands, praising him and getting right, it's not her fault. It's not her fault. It's not his fault. It's certainly not my fault. It's on you. It's because of you. Do you hear me today? If you're not doing it, it's your fault. You can't look at me and say, well, what's going on? It's not my fault. It's your fault. Enter into hope. Enter into worship. If the atmosphere of hope exists, then you've got to get in it and quit praying that it gets in you. Let me say that again. If the atmosphere of hope exists, you've got to stop and quit trying to say, I'm going to get in it. It has to get inside of you. Hallelujah. Hope means to anticipate with pleasure and to expect with confidence. How many of you are anticipating God to do something great in your life and expecting God to do something great in your life and anticipating a mighty move of God and anticipating and expecting a mighty move of God. I came by to tell you today to get your expectation back. Quit acting like something bad is going to happen in your life. Wake up every day with a bounce in your step, with a beat in your heart, expecting that something great is going to happen in your life today. But see, you can't flirt with hope. You have to get hope in you to the point where you aren't careful carrying the expectation but the expectation is carrying you you got to wake up every morning with a pep in your step with a beat in your chest with a praise on your voice that says today's going to be the day today is going to be the day something good's going to happen i may have had 10 bad days in a row but today it changes today something good is going to happen hallelujah give the lord a hand of praise i just have one more thing to say One more thing to say. Hope has a thick skin. A thick skin. And hope will endure any blow. And will put on patience like a robe. Hope will walk through a sea of blood. Hope will endure all things. If it be of the right kind. For the joy that is set before it. Patience is called patience of hope. Because it is hope that makes the soul exercise patience and long-suffering under the cross until the time comes for you to enjoy what you've been hoping for. I don't know if you've got hope until I see you wanting something that's over there. Let me say this again. I'm closing. I'm closing. I don't know if you've got hope until I see you wanting something That is over there. So how are you acting right here? You aren't showing me your hope when you walk over here to grab something and get something that you've been praying for. No, you're showing me your hope (laughs) when you're acting like you already got it and it ain't even in your hand yet. Let me say that again. You're not showing me your hope when you're going after something that's already there and all you got to do is go pick it up. You're showing me your hope when you are testifying, when you are declaring, when you are standing on the word of God for something that's not even happened yet. People can look at me stupid and crazy and think I'm a nut. But I'm telling you this. God has given me a key to this city. And I will be, this church will grow and be very successful. And I, this church will overflow with hundreds and thousands of people. People can look at me crazy. But see, it's easy for me to go over here and say, God will give me a church and I'll have, you know, maybe 100 people that will show up every once in a while and we'll have these chairs that we've had for 35 years with a floor that needs painted. That's easy for me to say because I already have that. 
But you're showing me your hope when I say God's going to do this thing for me because I know what God told me he'd do. God told me he saved my family. God told me he would heal my kids. God told me he would do this. You're showing me your hope when you begin to input those things that have not even happened yet. Do you hear me today? You're praising God for something that's not even taken place yet. That's why you've got to make up your mind that you're going to praise him no matter where you are in your life. You're going to praise him in the good times. You're going to praise him in the bad times. You're going to praise him on the mountains. You're going to praise him in the valley. You're going to praise him in the pits. You're going to praise him when your relationship is a mess. You're going to praise him when your money is jacked up. You're going to praise him when you got a bad doctor report. You're going to praise him when half your people didn't show up to church today. You are going to praise him through everything. You're going to lift your hands. You're going to praise him through everything. Do you hear me today? If I don't yet have what I've been hoping for, then you better believe hope is abounding in me and it's carrying me to the thing I've been praying for and it's carrying me to the thing I've been believing in hallelujah we need to wake up you can begin to play something softly we need to wake up and open our eyes and begin to say any day now <laughs> any day now Mary any day now Miss Mason any day now uh, Dewana any day now Rick any day now Sophia any day now Amber any day now that thing I've been hoping for is about to happen any day now Somebody's going to walk up to me and say, I want to give you this property over on so-and-so. Any day now, somebody's going to do that to me. Oh, pastor, you're really talking mumbly, fumbly stuff, aren't you? No, that's where my hope is. Because I hope and I believe what God said he would do, he will do in my life. And I don't need your backing because God promised me that. He didn't promise you that. I want you to hope with me and believe with me. But we got to wake up our eyes and say, any day now it's coming. That's why the psalmist said, I will hope continuously. Psalm 71, 14. You can put it up there, Colin. Psalm 71, 14. I will hope, what's it say? Continuously or continually. And will yet praise thee more and more. Don't miss what I just said. Why? Because it's abounding. It's going to happen. It's inside of me, which means it starts as a wave. Hope is a wave. Hope is a wave, and it carries you. I don't care how long you have to ride the wave. Just ride the wave. Don't stop shouting to get back on the shore when God's got you on the water. Do you hear me today? Don't stop getting mad when the hope is a wave, and it's carrying you. It's taking you somewhere. It's taking you to your next blessing. It's taking you to your next opportunity. It's taking you to your promises. Quit complaining about being on the shore when you're on top of the waves. I will hope continuously. And I will yet praise you what less and less as I continue to hope. As I continue to hope, my hope is dwindling. So I can't praise you as much as I used to, God. I'm sorry. No, David said, I will hope continually. That means he hadn't got it yet, but he's hoping for it, right? So I'm going to praise him less. No, I'm going to praise him more and more. Did you hear what I just said? Psalm 71, 14. I don't have what I've been hoping for. But the longer I have to wait, the more I'm going to praise him. I said, stand to your feet. The longer I have to wait, the more I'm going to praise him. The longer I have to wait, the more I'm going to praise him. You know what, Colin? Put that song on one more time, the one I gave you at the beginning. And let's play that again. I want to tell you today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with today, keep on hoping and keep on praising because it's going to turn around for your good. Do you hear me today? It's going to turn around for your good. I'm done, but I want to just end with this song today because we need this hope inside of us. I want you to have hope inside of you that the best days are ahead of you, that it's not behind you, it's ahead of you. If you need to come up to the altar and pray and get right or just begin to worship God today, I want you to come up right now and I'll begin to pray with you as we sing this song, as we play this song through. Amen. Come up, you can turn it up, please, Carl. For any of you today that are here and you've lost hope in certain situations and you need to get your hope back. 
Maybe you're starting to think things aren't going to happen for you or it's not going to happen the way you thought. You just need a refresher. You just need somebody to pray with you. I want you to, the altar is open right now. And I'll begin to pray with you. Come on as we sing this song. Hallelujah. have hope today how many of you still have hope today can say I have hope today I have hope today grab hands with the person next to you if you can you say why do we do this because you never know what somebody's going through and I want you to pray for them as I pray for you father God I come to you God and I know I've delivered this message the best of my ability and I've done everything that I can father God and and God I, sometimes I feel like it, it, it did it fall on deaf ears but God I know it fell in the right people's hearts today I know that God there is hope for a better future there is hope for tomorrow God and we got to begin to hope again America's got to begin to hope again Christians got to begin to hope again God no matter what somebody is going through in this place father God I declare in Jesus name you are moving for them you are moving through them father God God their finances are turning around the relationships are turning around their physical bodies are are turning around father god whatever they need you are going to do it in their lives god i thank you father god for this message i thank you for this service god i thank you god for what you're doing in our church and through our church in jesus name we pray can we give the lord a hand of praise if you believe there's hope if you believe there's hope come on give the lord a hand of praise if you believe there's hope hallelujah you may be seated shane can, can you get tavian I want to pray for him real quick, but I want to make, I want to take up the offering, and, but I, one of the announcements I want to make, we have someone in our church that is, 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 is if anyone is in need of a, a nice washer and dryer, okay, a very nice washer and dryer, if you're in need, anybody, we have somebody that's willing, wanting to, to sew that into our church, and so I want to just see me, and I will put you in touch with them, no, no, so, and you need to be in need, if you're really in need of one, please tell me, and, and, uh, and me, that means you're going to do your laundry at the laundromat every week, and you need a, you need a washer and dryer amen so if you're if you need that please see me after church and i will put you in contact with with who you need amen praise the lord i want to take up our tithe and our offering very quickly hallelujah amen come on are y'all excited 
We ought to be excited about giving. I'm not, I'm not going to take a long time on this. We're not getting out at 1, but we'll be out by 105, okay? So praise Jesus. But, but I'm not going to take a long time on this, but God gave me this revelation. Y'all know how we always hear, we always hear, right? How many of you hear, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, right? We always hear that, right? So God gave me this revelation, or, or showed me this revelation, I should say. And, and this is what he showed me. Pressed down, shaken together, and run over. It comes from... And I, and I heard this. He gave me this revelation. I heard and saw this, so he revealed this to me. I, not something I made up, so I don't want y'all to think I, I made this up. The, but, but he showed me this. The pressing down comes from back in, 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 in the days, in Jesus' days and stuff, when the people would be uh, picking grains or picking cotton or, or picking the seeds up, right, doing this. They were, they were picking up things and putting them in their bag, right? So they would have their bag, and then they would fill it up with whatever it was, uh, cotton or whatever it was, and then you would get it to the top, and you would think it was full, right? You think it's full, right? No, it's not. Because you, then the pressing comes, it begins to be pressed down. It begins to be pressed down. So they press down so they're able to put more into it. Do you hear me, what I'm saying? Press down. The shaking together comes so they begin to shake it up. They shake it up to begin to make it go even more down so they can, be, can, be, uh, can put more in it. So then it begins, they are able to put more and it becomes to been running over. So many times in our bag of blessings or whatever it is, we start thinking that we're pressed down shaking together and running over but we're not yet because we haven't it's not been pressed down yet it may seem like it's overflowing but God says it's going to begin to overflow once it's been pressed down and it's been shaken together and then it begins to run over it's going to become running over does anybody know what I'm saying it's going to become running over so many of you start thinking well I you know I, I, I'm not seeing this short or it hasn't happened yet in my life no I'm telling you because you got to understand it's not overflowed yet it's not overflowing in your life but the Bible says Pastor Ryan Ryan didn't say it, but right, the Bible says it's coming to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When you give to me, I shall give it back to you. Do you hear me? So today, I want you to think in your mindset about that. Are you giving God what's really his? Are you giving God his 10%? Are you giving God what he has said? Listen, I, I don't care if you I do care if you get mad at me, but I'm going to say it anyway. The Bible says, I didn't say it. The Bible says it. You have a curse on your life when you do not tithe. Now, I didn't say, y'all can get mad at me and say, I don't like when he says that. I didn't say it. Read it in the Bible for yourself. In Malachi, you can read it all for yourself. I did not say it. The Bible says you have a curse on your life. The Bible also says it shall come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Cody Ellers, come here real quick. Come here. Let me, I want to tell this testimony. I tell them what, what happened on, on last week. Can you turn this on a bit? Tell them what, what I prophesied to you and then what happened the next day or two days, whatever it is. Two days. Um, so I'm uh, I'm a theater tech major at UNLV, and so I'm getting into theater. That's where I was for the last three months in North Carolina, and so I came back home and I'm taking the semester off of school so I can work with a ballet company at the Smith Center, but I hadn't locked down those contracts yet, and I was pretty nervous. I was talking to the designer. And then a few, uh, like two weeks later, two days after Pastor Ryan had prophesied a uh, double portion, I got an email from the ballet company s asking me if I could uh, fill all the contracts for the season, which there's four of them. And they doubled my pay from the last show. That I <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Is that not an awesome testimony? Amen. I'm telling you. When you give God what is his, he give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Get, can I get one, please? If, you, uh, if you're make, paying check, make it payable to Grace Christian Center. If you want to pay online, you can pay online at gcclasvegas.com. If you want to pay via PayPal, it's in, the, uh, in our bulletin. Uh, give you every or if you want to pay credit card it's on here so we give you every opportunity to pay your tithes and give it to you know people I, I, I love when I don't love I'm being sarcastic I like when people think you know hey why has he got to talk about money and why, why is he talk about this let me tell you something first of all the church 
survives because of your giving. That's how it survives. We're not a denomination. We're not, we don't have a backing. We, whatever we bring in to this church is how this church makes it. And so, so that's number one. And number two, many people think, though, well, he's saying that because they want our money. Let me tell you something. Whether you give your $40, $60 a week, $100, whatever it is, the church is still going to survive. It's still going to make it no matter what. But you're missing out on blessings for your life. Not, because, not the church. You're missing out on blessings for your life when you don't give God what's his amen amen all right stand to your feet please ushers come on up stand to your feet say this to me say father god i give you my whole tithe on my offering today lord i thank you that as i give it shall be now y'all say this with passion it shall be given back to me pressed down shaken together and running over lord i thank you today that I have this to give, for it's all yours anyway. I give it cheerfully, thankfully, and grateful that I have it to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Hit the music, Colin. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Never mind, Colin. Don't <laughs> Praise the Lord. What? Yeah, come here. I want one more thing. We didn't get any music today. We, we're gonna work on that. We have reason. No, no. I want to pray for Tavian. He is. He's having a uh, a, a surgery on Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. He's having a surgery on Thursday on his eyes. And how many surgeries has he had? This is the. Um, this is the second, and um, it, it's a very serious surgery, but we know everything's going to be good, and everything's going to work out in Jesus' name, but we want to pray over them and pray over their family and, and pray as they go forward, and, and um, we're going to really be entering into worship on Wednesday night w- during, for, for this. Uh, that's one thing we wanted to do this before this surgery has. That's one of the reasons we're doing this, um, the drench service on Wednesday night. He's having a, it's a very serious surgery, but we are believing in Jesus' name that there's no complication, that everything is lined up according to the will of God. Amen. So will you stretch your hands out forward towards him today? Father God, I come to you today and I thank you for Tavian. God, and I thank you, God, for this opportunity for this surgery, Father God. We thank you, God, that he is going in here, Father God. He is going in. You're going to give him peace that passes all understanding. You're going to give him strength of a mighty warrior, Father God, that as he goes in here today, this week, Father God, the doctors will go in, Father God, and they will be able to fix whatever needs to fix, correct whatever needs to be correct, be able to put to get back together whatever the enemy has tried to separate or, or disconnect. We thank you, Jesus, today that he is healed from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Father God. I thank you, Father God, as he goes forward. We stand with them as a church family. We stand with them as friends. We stand with them as Grace Christian Center. God, that they are coming into this with strength. They are coming into this with peace. They are coming into this with power. God, that you are going to do a mighty work, Father God. We are declaring, we're standing, Father God. Even the Lord, we hope, we have hope for healing in his eyes. We have the hope for complete and total total healing in his eyes, Father God. No matter what the situation may look like, no matter what the situation may be at hand, we have hope for his eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. All right. Remember, you can get the CD today. Remember that. All my, remember this, all leaders, if you got a text from me on, when, on this past week about leadership, about doing, you're, you're in leadership or doing something, I must meet with you for literally one minute. Or if you are interested in getting involved in leadership, you say, I want to get involved. I want to do things. I want to be more part. I want to do things. Then I want you to come over here. Give me one minute of your time. Once everybody gets to sit down, I need one minute and you can go, okay? Lord, in Jesus' name, go with us in peace and bring us back at the point of time. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Leaders, just go over there to that section where Carla is or people that want to be in leadership. Please go over there very quickly. The quicker we do this, the quicker y'all can all get out of here. If everybody will walk over here right now, we can get out of here.